Okay. So purchasing power parity means that in international relationships between countries, I mean trade, there should be some kind of equilibrium in purchasing power. So the money should have more or less the same. This would, we're going to see, we, we can take it in a stronger way or an easier way. They should, the money should have more or less the same purchasing power because if they don't, if money is not the same everywhere, there could be some consequences. And the purchasing power parity, you, you understand what it is. It's about purchasing power. It's about real goods and services that money can buy. And now believe it, uh, take it as an equilibrium because there cannot be a case where the same money can buy a lot more than in other place. Okay, very good, because we have international trade, which will ha somehow make the equilibrium valid again. And now we can go back to what I, we saw here, law of one price. Law of one price. So, the law of one price is very easy to understand if we have, for example, two countries, let's say, Romania and Turkey. And let's say we take a product like gold. Gold. This is gold. Uh, it's a nice product that is traded both in Romania and in Turkey. And this is the, the price of a unit of gold, and this is the price of a unit. This is the quantity, this is the quantity. For, I make it really simple. I mean, I'm just quoting the one price. Don't, care, don't worry about uh, different currencies. Let's suppose in Romania, gold is really expensive. The price would be like this. And in Turkey, it's really cheap. Yeah? So you see, we have a discrepancy in purchasing power for gold. The average Turkish citizen can buy with the same money. I, I can even have a price here in dollars. So let's say I... I make the calculations, Romanian currency in dollars and Turkish lira in dollars. And the same price will be quoted in a unit, it's a dollar. And if I have this discrepancy, can it last? No. no. Because there is an opportunity for arbitrage. Arbitrage means here to get money, to have an opportunity to earn money without risk. This is arbitrage. You make profits without risk. Because what you do here, you immediately go to Turkey and you buy a lot of gold and immediately you sell the gold in Romania and guess what, there's no risk because you have such a huge price difference. What will happen now? If you go to Turkey and you buy a lot of gold, what will change, demand or supply? The demand will? shift to the right will increase, you see? Because a lot of people will take advantage of this arbitrage. What will happen in Romania? The supply will increase. Yeah? There is going to be gold coming from Turkey, which will make the prices, guess what? Very close. As long as there is a significant difference, there will be arbitrage. Of course, we have to take care of what? Transport costs. We have to take care of I know, import duties. Maybe the trade is not so free. But if the discrepancy is large enough, people will do arbitrage, which will bring the prices back in at the same level. Okay. And economists believe that arbitrage is a very strong force that's bringing markets in equilibrium. Whenever you, you see differences, big differences, there will be some arbitrage which will bring them back. Uh, you can have absolute purchasing power parity, which means that you really believe that arbitrage will solve any difference, which will make the real exchange rate equal to what? It's one. So if it's one Romanian Big Mac for one American Big Mac, which means the nominal exchange rate is in perfect equilibrium with the price in US and the price in Romania, then I can say there is no arbitrage possibility. It's one. It doesn't matter where you buy the Big Mac. In Romania or in US, it's the same thing. And this will be the absolute 
purchasing power parity. This is what the Economist is doing, the, the news uh, paper, the magazine Economist is doing, in order to see whether the nominal exchange rate deviates from the equilibrium. Because, for example, in my example with 9 lei and 2.5 dollars, we calculated 1.1 real exchange rate, you see, between Romania and US, which means that in versus dollar, we, we don't have the one parity, is 1.1, which makes Big Macs cheaper in Romania than in the United States, which means our exchange rate is undervalued or overvalued. So we have at four lay for one dollar, it's 1.1. If I believe in absolute purchasing power parity, it means this exchange rate is wrong because I cannot say anything about the prices. The prices are market prices. This is it. I cannot say nine lane, nine lane is too much or is too uh, is not enough. I cannot say two point five dollars for one Big Mac is too much or is not enough. These are taken are given. What I can criticize, let's say, is the nominal exchange rate. So four lay for one dollar. If we believe in absolute purchasing power parity, it's undervaluated or overvaluated. How much should it be? So think about in order to have one, I should have what exchange? You can calculate this. In order to have one in uh, calculation, yeah, so I, if I write nine, oh, sorry, two point five uh, over nine, multiplied by this exchange rate, let's say x should be equal one. Okay, how much should be x? Nine over two point five, which makes how much is nine over two point five? How much? 3.6. So if our exchange rate was 3.6 lay for one dollar, we would be in the world of one price. But it's four, which means our currency is undervaluated. Undervaluated. So from the big from the Big Mac index perspective, our currency is undervalued in comparison with US. And they, you should really Google it. They make a table with uh, most of the currencies in the world, and they make predictions based on this calculation how much the exchange rate will change in the future. Because if it's undervalued, then it means in the future it should right. appreciate. Now, why should I believe in absolute purchasing parity when Keep in mind there are transport costs, transportation costs. You, you cannot really ship goods for free. And there are legal restrictions like taxes, import duties, that make trade less profitable. Therefore, there is also a relative exchange rate parity, which, mean, which says something like, I don't think you have it here, but uh, you have it for the exam. The, the relative uh, purchasing power parity says, that there could be deviation from the one here, yeah, the one in real exchange rate. So real exchange rate must not be necessary one. Could be 1.1, 1 .1, could be 0 0.9. Why? Because transportation costs, because uh, differences in quality of goods, differences in the import duties, whatever. What the relative exchange rate says, even e so, or if this is not one, it should be stable. I can write these formulas and please uh, take that. This is the real exchange rate. It's equal to nominal exchange rate multiplied by price abroad over the price in my country. If I make a very easy calculation here, I can write it like this. Okay. Now you can make now an adjustment which says Percentage change in real exchange rate plus percentage change in domestic prices, the prices from my country, 
should approximately equal percentage change in nominal exchange rate plus percentage change in foreign prices. This is basic mathematics. It's uh, no, it makes no sense to insist why it's like this. You can check it. It's approximately equal, right? Good. What the relative purchasing power parity is saying is that this should be zero. There should not be any change in real exchange rate because we already had here factors like transportation costs, uh, fiscal duties, whatever, which takes this away. What is left is that change in nominal exchange rate, this one from here, should equal the difference between my inflation and inflation abroad. This is a very important formula because, you see, it's bringing together the exchange rate and this is, I can write it here, inflation home and this is inflation abroad with a minus. Okay, it's the inflation rate differential. So if I have now, for example, in Romania, inflation rate of 3% and in Eurozone, let's say it's 1%, I have a 2% differential in inflation rate, which will make me expect an appreciation or a depreciation of my currency. Depreciation. A depreciation because I have direct quotation. This is lay for euro. And if I have here 2% more, 2% more lay for euro means that I have a depreciation. Our currency will be weaker. And now you have a very good tool for you to make predictions for exchange rates. If somebody will ask you, what do you think about the exchange rate of our currency? You should say, let me look at inflation rate differential. Because I learned about relative purchasing power parity, and now I can make a prediction. 